and she was pretending to be other people. So Robin Pace, also known as Leah Rafalco, also worked at Danbury Ambulance around 1998. I think she was in the dispatch office. She helped run the dispatch center. And she called herself Natalie. And she supposedly dated a guy named Chris Williams. So Chris Williams is the uh, Boy Scout. He's the guy that acts like the Boy Scout of this organization that I'm describing. But I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Williams used to live in Scarsdale, New York, went to Hitchcock Presbyterian Church in the mid-80s. I think he acted as an aide in a Sunday school class that I was in when I was a little kid. When I was eight or nine, Chris Williams was an aide in my Sunday school class. He was a teacher's aide. And then 10 or 15 years later, he has made his way up to not only Danbury, Connecticut, but working at the same exact company that I work for. So some of you may want to start analyzing all these people that you met as acquaintances and friends throughout your life because these MK Ultra military operatives come up again and again and again throughout your life often acting as many different individuals. They have many different identities.
So across the street from the farm on Riley Mountain is a field, is a big empty field that is gated in. And right there on the field, by the gate, someone has appeared to light some wooden posts on fire. So I don't know if uh, the farm on Riley Mountain is some sort of bed and breakfast where their customers can spend some time out in the country. But then this kind of looks out of place. Someone has decided to light some wooden debris on fire in the field right across from this little quaint farm on Riley Mountain. So they've obviously burned some wood what looks like old posts right in the middle of their field across the street. So it looks kind of primitive. And when I zoomed in on it, you can see that there are nails and screws among the ash. So it looks kind of like a nice place. They have a nice sign out front and then they are burning railroad ties or posts out in the field across from their facility. So it looks a little strange. So on the left is another field. I guess this may belong to the uh, house next door. And I really can't make it out. But I guess that is a sailboat. And then there is this metallic piece of equipment and I cannot make out what that is too well either. Next on the left is a tree. And it looks like somebody has removed the bark there appears to be sawdust underneath the tree and then there is this flat area on the trunk of the tree so it seems that someone has either cut part of the bark of the tree trunk off with either a saw or something like a sander and then on the left is a blue box I guess I really cannot make out what this is if it's just a piece of garbage or if it's a kid's toy or what. Then on the right is a sign that advertises this property as a Meadow Sweet Farm and it's number 156. So I looked up Meadow Sweet Farm in Antrim on the internet and this one did have a website but the website was very simple and did not have too much information on it that I could see. It says build a free website on tripod and then they had World Lotto advertised on this build your own free website. And then they have a photograph of three individuals and it says from left to right Susan, Bob and Say Yi. And then underneath that photograph was a photograph of a young boy photographed by himself. And then underneath that, it says, this is the Bernstein's family's website. We live in Antrim, New Hampshire. Our names are in order of youngest to oldest. Say E, Sam, Susan, and Bob. We hope you enjoy our site as Sam put a lot of work into it. Then it says, P.S. Sign our guest book. P.P.S. We are sorry about the difference in the URL and actual site name. So besides that, they did not have too much information on that website. And when I clicked on their photographs, there came a prompt saying I did not have the latest flash player. So I would need to download it. And they had the uh, prompt for me to download some sort of flash player. So I did not want to do that. That's how you could get viruses and stuff in your computer. But anyway, here are the photographs that they put on their free website here. They don't say anything about their farm or what they do there. And uh, I zoomed in on these people's faces so that you could get a clearer look. What is kind of unusual is that when you zoom in on the older guy's face, from far away it looks like he is wearing glasses. 
but when you zoom in on it, it looks like someone has used some sort of photograph editor to kind of smudge away the glasses. So I don't know if those are rimless glasses and you really cannot make them out when you zoom in on it, but it's kind of odd that from far away they look like glasses and when you zoom in on it, they look extremely blurred as if he's not wearing glasses at all around his eyes. So I guess this is Meadow Sweet Farm. And right after that, there is a uh, smaller property with a cabin with a green roof on the left. And on the right was another property. And straight ahead, you'll see that there is a dead-end road. The road came to a stop, 
where a hiking trail picked up and I believe that this hiking trail leads to a nearby road called Ashley Road. So turning around and going the other way, I saw that there was also a sign for the smaller property with a green roof and the sign said the cabin. So turning around and going the other way on Turner Hill Road, there is this other area with some firewood stacked up. So there is a black trailer, there is a wood rack where they have some wood stacked up, and then there is this very neat pile of wood right in front of that. So that is right next door to this tiny house. I do not know if this is part of Meadow Sweet Farm. I'm guessing it is not because it has its own address and it is marked as 157. In the back there is a uh, some sort of wooden piece of furniture or a rack that is covered with what appears to be a plastic tarp. And then there is a little shed on the left with what seems to be a rider lawnmower with a basketball beside the lawnmower and a green ball on top of the lawnmower. They have a small orange tractor, they have a pile of logs, and I do not know if that is part of Sweet Metal Farm or if that belongs to the people that live across the street at number 157 Turner Hill Road. So I did not notice it on the way up but there is a driveway on the left and it is marked with a sign that says number 18 on it and there is what seems to be a longer driveway and it kind of heads back in the direction of that area marked as the farm on Riley Mountain. Now what is very interesting is on MapQuest they show a trail leading from this area right where this farm on Riley Mountain is and it goes up behind the property somewhere and the trail ends on a road called Whitney Road so this trail is connecting Whitney Road with what appears to be the farm on Riley Mountain somewhere behind this property is a trail that leads over to Whitney Road according to MapQuest and on the New Hampshire Road Atlas, it just shows Turner Hill Road going straight up and connecting with Whitney Road. So I drove over to Whitney Road, which is right off of Route 202. So I am now driving up Whitney Road. At the top of Whitney Road is a property with a lot of junk in the yard, including a truck with the name J&J Chimney on the side of it. They have also stacked tires on the top of that box truck. And then there is a uh, camper trailer. Looks like it may have been damaged and then patched up on the side with wood. The property is extremely disheveled with junk all over the front porch. They have three vehicles in the front, all with their hoods left open. And there is garbage all on the driveway. So that is where the road dead ends. But there is a trail that is leading up a hill into the forest. 
I was too busy looking at this nice piece of real estate. I wish I got a better uh, shot of the uh, trail going up the hill into the forest. But again, looking this up on MapQuest, this trail connects this road, Whitney Road, with Turner Hill Road. So it's very interesting that on one side you see stuff like this on Whitney Road, basically the slums of the area. And that connects with an area that looks like the land of bed and breakfasts, all marked with their quaint little country names. The farm on Riley Mountain, Meadow Sweet Farm, Taco Acres. It looks like a yuppie's paradise on one side of the trail and a redneck nightmare on the other. So who knows if these two neighborhoods are related besides the fact that they're connected with the trail that leads from this house over to the farm on Riley Mountain. And then on the left, there is a house with a large stone out in front. 
and on that stone they have an engraving that says Taco Acres and there is a picture of a taco. They have two posts on either side of the driveway and they have some cheesy Christmas reefs on each post.
John. How are you? Oh, hey there. Look at this. A family reunion. Yep. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Excellent. So what's going on is the water heater sprung a leak the other night. Uh, the big one or? The one in the back. Uh, the one, uh, oh, yeah. The one, one in the back. Yeah. yeah. Can't be the one in the front. Uh. So I disconnected the thermostat wire, drained it down, uh -huh. and the electric water heater is fine. Ah, oh, good. We want to hear that, so. Yeah, the hot water wasn't quite hot enough. I put a new element in the tempering valve and oh. got 120, almost 121 at the tap, which I think is fine. Yes. Be good enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even for three people, it would be fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It would be good. Yeah, I mean, how was it before you turned the heat on? Or Today? switch the boiler over? It no. It wasn't hot enough. No. No. Oh, so it never has been hot enough since you've right. been right. Yeah, no, well, let me know, believe me. No. Let me okay. know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and before you go upstairs. Yeah.
You get it over there, sir? A little more? Thanks. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you.
these should line up with the uh, old ones pretty good if I want to leave those footers in, right, sir? Oh, I would say so, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, the same block. And, yeah. uh... You could just get this stuff out with a chisel that comes right yep. out or something? Yep. All right, cool. Yeah. And, uh... These, uh... Are pretty durable. They're not going to crumble like those are, right? Well, they will over time because concrete. If we get salt and stuff on, they're going to corrode anyway. But yeah, I'm putting a drainage system. They didn't have a drainage system behind this wall. Yeah, yeah. no, it should, be, it should be good. It should last quite a few years. How much is that? Quite a few years. I don't know, 15, 20 years maybe. 15, 20. Yeah. Okay. 30, even longer. Well, as long as your block wall does on the foundation, same stuff. Yeah, they never replaced that. I hope you know. I hope not. They might replace one or two, but not the whole thing. Right. So, yeah. so I hope I hope longer than fifteen or twenty. Yeah. They'll last quite a while. I mean, yeah, they should last a long time. Was was these uh, a lower quality? Than I don't I don't know. I don't know when this was first put in. I don't. How long ago was that put in? I would say maybe like uh, 2012, 2013, oh, wow. and, and they didn't put any drainage years. behind the wall, no gravel. Yeah. So it was just this. Right. It looks like a version of process or something like that behind yeah. it. Yes. It was right against this, yes. and over time it all started to crumble. Most of those blocks over there are crumbled. Yeah. So uh, I hope that uh, by putting the good drainage system, I'm not going to have to replace those in uh, 15 years. Right. I'll be an old man by then. Right. You should be, if you put stone in, because it'll get rid of the water. Uh-huh. If you put stone behind it, it'll get rid of the moisture behind it. Okay. So, so they won't stay wet. So, uh, so is, yeah. is that really what they tell you, 15 years on those? I don't know. I, don't, I just deliver. I've only been here four years, so I don't know. All right, so hopefully the people at the concrete factory had the perfect mix and not like too much water, or too much sand. Right. Okay, cool. They put too much sand, I heard they break apart easier, so hopefully they know how to mix it real good over there. But that, this here is, is spalling. I'm, I'm from the concrete business. You are, huh? And that's spalling. So what that tells me is water's got in there, then it froze, and it popped the surface off. Yeah, spalling, right, okay. That's what that is. Yeah. But, but blocks last a long time. You get your block foundation, so they should last many years. Yup. Can you give me the sign anything, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Do it, please. Thank you. Thank you again. Enjoy your day. You too. Have one range. more delivery, huh? I got yeah, I gotta go to Ringe. And I got one more load after that. One well you're more. not bored operating that machine, huh? Nope. <laughs> no. No. Not working the ads rest of the day. Okay, sir. Thank All you right, again. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. How you doing today, sir? Oh, it's all worked out. How hey, you doing, hey, sir? Hey, how you hey, doing, how you sir? Doing? You look so familiar. Yeah. Where else did you work besides here? Uh, I've been here a long time. Yeah? Yeah. You look familiar to me. Yeah. I noticed that when I drove up. How you doing, sir?
You look familiar to me. Yeah? I noticed that when I drove up. How you doing, sir? What are we getting today? Uh, this is what I ordered last time I was in. I was in like two days ago. Yep. Yeah. And I was, uh, I pulled apart the uh, rock uh, wall. Yeah. And I saw that uh, they used, uh, I guess they're cornerstones, but they're half size half blocks. blocks. Yeah. That would make things easier when you're building and everything. Let me show you about that. Yes, sir. So you can make your own half with a brick set and a hammer. And it's pretty easy to do. Uh-huh. We don't do it. We used to, but we don't anymore. How many halves do you think you need? How many halves do you think you need? Probably not more than seven or eight. So what you do is you take, what, what color did you get, brown? I think I got gray. Gray. Yeah. So all you do is you take a brick set, which is a three inch wide chisel. Yes, sir. And you tap, 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 flip it over. Uh-huh. Same thing. Put a good score on that. Yep. And then take the chisel back here, tap, 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 and they pop right open. They do, huh? And you got two halves. Yeah, I got a uh, saw. So I got a little saw. I'm looking about renting one. So the saw, the only thing with a saw is you'll have a smooth cut here instead of split face. If you split it with a brick set and a hammer, you get the split face. Uh huh. With a saw, you'll get a smooth cut. So yeah, you, either I, way. When I've tried to split them before, they end up cracking uh, uneven sometimes. It's really? not a perfect thing. So you're probably a lot better than. I am at splitting those with a with a hammer and a chisel, but uh, I didn't have the best luck with that. So, so you could take a saw, score it on both sides. Yup. So they don't they don't uh, pour like half block. No. That would make it real easy. No. Nope. I wonder why they nope. don't do that. None of these wall systems are easy. Yeah. I know. They all take some type of manipulation to make them work. Yup. You know. Well, why don't you think they do that out of curiosity? Because the mold is is one piece. Right. When the concrete goes in the mold. Right. And I don't know why they don't do the hash, but they never have. Okay. That's why you don't you don't see How any. How about the here. corner blocks? Corner blocks? Yeah. Those are the half blocks. Right. So uh, could I order some corner blocks and? Uh... It's you got to make halves to make corners. Okay. Let me give you a schematic inside. Yeah, uh, I can show you. I, I brought one. There, it looked like a factory poured uh, corner block I have in the car that, mm -hmm. that wasn't Let's look. cut. So I, that, they do make those, but you haven't heard of that. Huh? No, they don't make them, they split them. Yeah, okay, if you take a look though, it looks like uh, then it's, it's a, been then it's, a, then it's a different manufacturer than uh -huh. the one we, we use. We used to make those blocks here years ago. You did? We never made half blocks. Contractors always split their own. You still use that big rock crusher up there? No, that's the, those are actually bins for uh, the concrete, stone, and sand. Ah. Because Carroll Concrete loads their cement mixes on the other side of this building. It just funnels it, huh? Yeah. You got a, a, a machine that makes uh, the crushes the material, makes uh, gravel and all that, or that, no? That's done at the, at the gravel ah. plant. You guys own that too? No. We used to. Yeah, I brought one of those to take a look. Me. Yep. So what they did, what they did is they took a brick set and a hammer, uh huh, and they split that. Score both sides down about that good looked, that quarter, looked quarter of an inch. That looks perfect, though. I, yep. I can't believe that they did that with a hammer. Yep. That's done with a hammer and a brick set.
That Good looked, that quarter, looked quarter of an inch. That looks perfect, though. I, yep. I can't believe that they did that with a hammer. Yep, that's done with a hammer and a brick set. Yep, a and that's and a, a corner set. block and an end block. Let me give you schematic inside. Come on in. Okay, cool. That's funny that they don't make that, though. You would think they would have done that long, long ago, right? Yeah. Should I follow you through that door or this door? This one. Okay. Like, you have, I know you have to cut the uh, bricks all different sizes, but that would make things a little easier. Save me a few cuts if they had a couple of half blocks, you know? Yeah, we don't have them. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Man. You can get right online and print this. Oh yeah. You see, you see with the half blocks. These are halves. Uh huh. You put four halves opposing each other. Right. And you can make piers. Right. And then you can do stairs with them. These are full blocks. These are half blocks. So the block is longer than it is wide. Uh huh. So they oppose each other. Can I keep this one here, or do you need it? I'll make you a copy. How nice of you. Trying to see if there's a see here they're showing cut in the block. Right. Yeah, when I use a hammer and a brick set, it always cracked uh, uneven. And so I you gotta you you gotta just go tap 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 flip it over. Do it again, tap, uh -huh. tap, 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 flip it over, same thing. Then get on the back of it and just keep tapping it. And do, you, do you have those off. kits, a hammer and a brick set kit right here? We have hammer and chisels right here, yep. Yeah, maybe you got better ones at a Home Depot then, huh? What, what's the best? Uh... So the brick set you want to use, I would do uh, the three inch. Right. And then uh, probably a three pound two pound or a three pound hammer whatever you whatever you're comfortable with yeah I got one of this, those this one's a little extreme yeah that chisels probably I don't know 10 or 12 bucks so uh, one out the three and a half would you say sir um I've just always used the three since it's such a big uh, block would you recommend using a three and a half or well you're a... not going to cover it either way but the choice is yours it'll work so you think that'll work better though, huh? I've always used a three. I've never three. used a three and a half. Yeah, I got a, uh, I got like a two and a half at home. It's something from Home Depot, so it's not as nice as that. So maybe the wider one would be better? And will it help to score with a stone saw? I have a small stone saw, like uh, with a. You can. Yeah, and then and then you just go ahead and uh. You kind of go down the line, cracking it every uh, three inches, huh? Yeah, just Give it a tap just, every three just take the just take the thing and you know if, if this is your line, just go tap 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 tap. Flip the block over. Do it again. Uh -huh. You don't you don't want to shock it all from one side. Uh -huh. Do it from both. Okay. Okay. And like I said, you want to score it a good quarter inch to three eighths of an inch deep. So it's going to take a couple three times on each side. Then flip the block on in where that little groove is in the back, and just tap 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 tap, and she's going to go pop. If you get both lines on both sides perfectly even, it'll be even better, right? You know, if you if you can take a. A square, line it up with the back of the block, the flat part. Right, yeah. And draw a nice line in the center so you right. get it right in the center. Yep. You definitely want it in the center. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Have fun with that. Always do. High protection. Right? So let me ask you, how many guys usually use to pick up those 70-pound 70, 70 blocks? One guy. 
One guy, good to know. One guy. Yeah, that's how I did it last time. It's been a, a few years since I built a retaining wall with that size block. Yeah. So how much do they weigh a piece? 75, 80 pounds. 75, 80, huh? And that's yeah. how you got your forearm lift, 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 lift with up. your back. <laughs> I mean, lift with your knees, not your back. All right, sir. Thanks again. You're welcome. All right, take care. Yeah, you too. Face. 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 Tap, 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 and they pop right open. Tap, 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 and they pop right open. Tap, 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 and they pop right open.